Hey guys, it's Big Dave here for Tales of Talara, and it's Monday, and you know that means it's time for Warfronts. This week on Warfronts, once again, it is my level 41 rogue. He is specced into Bard as usual. Well, he's about to be specced into Bard, because when I joined this match, in addition to being mercenaried over to the Guardians, I was one of four DPS. So I went ahead and played my role and decided I would probably benefit the team a little bit more if I popped over to support. This would at least give us some measure of healing, even though it always pains me to heal these icky guardians, but I do kind of want to win the match, so here we go. So no show last week. As I've explained before many times on the channel, I have a very small window of opportunity to record an episode of Warfronts if I miss it. There is no show. There was no show because I missed my opportunity. I sat in the queue for about 25 minutes uh, last week trying to get a game, did not get a game successfully, and uh, that is that. So this week, kind of the same thing, actually. Sat in the queue for an extended period of time, finally got this game. This was the only game I was able to get during my hour of allotted playtime, and uh, that kind of is the story of my rifting life these days. Very, very small windows. I am not playing this game at all the last three weeks. So you're going to see here we uh, kind of do a really poor job of claiming the center. I mean, when I say poor, I mean uh, utterly and completely poor. And they easily take the relic and abscond with it to their side of the garden. So uh, yeah, a bit of a shaky start there. These four and five... Uh, person matches, these te these matches where the teams are so low in number, they always play so sloppy, unless you're just really with a good set of guys, and uh, this is not going to be any exception. This is going to be a really sloppy game. At first, it's going to look like they're simply going to run away with this, especially given sort of the, the timidness of some of my teammates, but eventually, uh, with me charging forward, oftentimes when I have no, no good reason... <laughs> to be charging forward and sane people would be playing a bit more wise and a bit more strategic. Here I go off by myself making a run solo to try and change the virtues of my team. Now as you can see I'm going up against someone who's doing a pretty good job of healing himself and he's got some support. So uh, really not looking too good for myself here and uh, you will see very shortly that it doesn't turn out too well for me, your friendly neighborhood bard. As respawns come in, reinforcements do arrive on the scene and even though we do get the kill on the carrier, uh, I find myself dead and my teammates in no position to claim that fang. So this is just one of those matches, like I said, sloppy, dirty, uh, icky, bad decisions all around. Some good stuff, some bad stuff. It ends on a really hilarious note. A uh, big giant shout out to the guy who pulls the winning grab. And you'll see that at the end of the episode. So uh, really, really one of those times where you're just like, damn, I can't believe that we just let that happen. Uh, but it's a really fun match overall. A bit frustrating in the beginning, but I had a pretty good time. So like I was saying, I'm really not playing Rift at all. Uh, initially, my plan had been to play Guild Wars 2, but that's right out the window because I'm subscribed for another three months to Rift, and I can't even find uh, six hours a week, seven hours a week. I can't play an hour a day of Rift. I am literally only playing the last three to four weeks. I am only playing this game in order to record this show. That makes me far from a trusted resource for Rift knowledge. It actually just makes me, uh, I guess, a poser, kind of. So I am enjoying myself. I do like the opportunity to get into matches and to get uh, these videos made, and I have a lot of fun doing it. But yeah, I am not what I would consider active for the last three or so weeks. Uh, I am queuing, I am playing a very little bit, but it's really, it's not much at all, and it, it absolutely breaks my heart. Uh, so R Guild Wars 2 is right out for me at the moment. It's just not going to happen. Uh, you'll see us kind of start a brief comeback right here, and uh, that is a nice thing. Always feels nice not to get completely steamrolled, get that uh, score up into triple digits, makes yourself feel a little bit better. So yeah, it's just a weird time right now. I mean, I am splitting my time amongst non-MMO games and Rift. Uh, this is my MMO of choice. You know, I, I know they just dropped the... 5.0 patch for World of Warcraft, or they were, they're about to tomorrow, and uh, not tempting me back with that new patch. 
uh, with mists on the horizon. Absolutely not tempted to go back there right now. Uh, not looking at any other MMOs, like I said, gonna back burner Guild Wars for the time being. Uh, this is my game. And it pains me not to be able to play it as much as I would like to. You're going to see me go here and uh, pick up the Fang. I feel like I do a bit of mismanagement here. I, I think I could have managed this Fang a little bit better. They're coming in force. And I should really be retreating right now. But I stopped to, uh, to try to, to pour out a little bit of healing. And I find myself in range of three or four of their casters. They had two Necromancers on that team, as if I can recall correctly, that were particularly difficult. I mean, you know, they're doing all that stuff that uh, necromancers in the 30s and 40s do. They're healing themselves. Uh, they have a fairly powerful minion at their disposal. So really, anytime I came up against one of them, it was sort of like treading water, uh, not getting any progress, just kind of running in place, uh, tr try to keep myself alive and try to do a little bit to them. But I almost always needed a buddy, a partner in order to try to take one of those guys down. I have to say, walking away from this game, you know, what it reminded me of is the good times that I always had uh, with Black Garden. You know, Black Garden is such a frequent, a frequent star here on the channel. It's, it's just, sometimes it gets old, sometimes you don't like it, and sometimes you have a game like this that kind of pops up and it, it makes you remember uh, how these games can, can have a nice, fun edge to them and that you can do something that's kind of cool you know you can have a nice small battle some back and forth you know we make the comeback then they cap it off you know it's really really nice when you get those you do so often get uh, blowouts one way or the other and while those are fun in their own special way it is fun to kind of get a competitive match like this where you do make a comeback and and things look uh, look a little bad right now uh, but we will make a brief comeback and uh, ultimately it will go as a loss in the Guardian column, a loss in my uh, win-loss column, but my beloved Defiant will triumph. And uh, I, I joke about that. I'm really not loyal to either in this particular uh, MMO. Uh, that's one of the things that I've talked about in the past, that I think they've never really done that... that They've never had that defining moment, you know. This all the lore goes back to this defining moment where the the Defiance and Guardians split. You know the schism that happens at Port Sion when uh, when the wards are dropped and and everything goes south. Uh, but it's never felt that way for me. I've I've never. You'll see me here grabbing the Fang. Uh, dying out, trying to get to my teammates, trying to position the Fang in a convenient spot, doesn't happen. Maybe should have retreated back towards my spawn. Uh, but as I was saying, you know, I've never felt a particular loyalty to either side. I generally like my bomby. I have uh, three or four bomby characters, so generally I enjoy playing a bomby. So I think that that's probably the reason that I would pick Defiant to favor if I had to. Uh, man, I'm kind of all over the place with this uh, particular episode, right? Uh, but but yeah, so I'm going to come in here and we're going to try to make a nice little comeback. We do have the Fang. Uh, we will, in a moment or two, acquire a healer. Uh, perhaps it would have been good at that point for me to switch back to DPS, but uh, ultimately it's too little too late. And though the healer does come in and put up, uh, you know, 30k plus of healing in a short window, uh, it, it really doesn't end up being uh, it, my damage versus what I would have done. You know, we can we could math it out and see if it would have been worth it. But if I'm just doing the quick, dirty math in my head, I think it was probably uh, not a big deal that I stayed in my support role and uh, didn't enhance my team's DPS with what little I would have brought on. So you see me here again going up against one of these Necromancers and just really making no progress. Of course, I do have uh, two on one right here. He's draining my life. I am dying slowly. I can't keep up. And uh, there we go. I am dead. And this is, man, this is a long respawn. One thing that is, as I've advanced with my bard is, that, I, that I do have as a complaint for certain is the amount of ramp up time it takes after I get back uh, to life. You're going to notice here I'm waiting uh, over 20 seconds for a respawn. And then if I pop in and I go to pull all my buffs, uh, that is fanfare of vigor, fanfare of power, I then uh, skip over the uh, other fanfare that I would normally cast and uh, pull my motifs 
then I'm going to pull out my uh, my uh, anthem and, you know, there we go. So that was a lot of ramp up time and I skipped one of my uh, one of my fanfares. So, yeah, really, really a uh, lot of ramp up time reminding me kind of of the uh, cleric I was playing uh, upon launch or in the beta. I think I played that cleric in the beta. It was a just a car shaman. I think, and it was something like six or eight buffs at level 15 or 16 that I had to put up. Uh, yeah, not fun. So here we're going to get their uh, fan carrier cornered. Ultimately, I'm going to die here. Uh, just not enough damage output, and uh, I am focused down. So, you know, that's what's going to happen when you're focused down. Uh, my teammates are going to try to get that drop. They are going to work for it. Uh, the game could be in the bag here, but we do manage to force that drop. We're going to get a fang grab, and then you're going to see what I was talking about. Here we go. Grab the fang. I am anxious to get back into this. Pop right back in. Uh, quickly hit my uh, my two fanfares, and uh, then move towards the battle. Probably could have used uh, could have used my anthem that sped me up uh, just to get into the battle a little bit quicker. But uh, you know, I'm going to get there when I'm going to get there. Whatever. So I come in and find this uh, this ranger type fo person here, this ranger marksman, whatever the hell he is. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to pour on my motifs here to make sure that he gets blanketed and the rest of my team. And uh, we are going to go out to reinforce. And uh, here is when we're going to have uh, a bit of egg on our face, if you will. A bit of an embarrassment here as our carrier dies and their stealthy rogue picks up the fang and absconds with it around the outside border wall. So quite embarrassing right there, if I must say so myself. A really, really embarrassing way to end that game. Uh, really just not enforcing, not reinforcing our fang carrier, allowing him to die. Maybe we had a chance to actually come back and do a little bit there. As you look at the healing numbers, if you notice, you have the two purple uh, defiance, those uh, necromancers who were pouring on a lot of healing, plus they had a cleric. Uh, who was healing as well. So that was really the story of this game, healing. In, often in small games like this, it's healing that wins games. It's not unusual in a game like this to see uh, one particularly strong healer uh, really just change the balance. And you can see up until uh, our fifth person joined and got about 33k of healing, I was the sole uh, healer putting in anything of substance for our team, so uh, an interesting kind of uh, interesting kind of look there at exactly uh, how a game breaks down. You know, sort of as you go forward and, and you look at things, uh, it, it's always fun. I mean, I don't generally look at the stats too much and interpret them too much, but uh, you know, you kind of see it gives you a good chance to sort of to get an, an idea of what you were doing in the game. Did you contribute uh, as well as maybe you could? But uh, yeah, this has been a weird sort of episode. It's been a weird couple of weeks with Warfronts. Uh, Episode 58, I think, going in the books here, uh, we are going to push strong to get through 60, and uh, we're going to see where it goes from there. I'm definitely not uh, not saying that I want to end the show in any, uh, or end my Rift coverage in any, uh, any certain or uncertain terms, but I'm really struggling to get the opportunities that I want to play this game. And if discontinuing videos about the game gave me two or three more hours a week to play the game, I'm getting to the point where it might be worth it. So let me know what you think um, in the comments below if if you uh, have a particular passion for this, if you're not just continuing to watch this show because it pops in your inbox and you click on it and uh, you have a particular passion for uh, my Rift coverage, let me know. Uh, you know, I, I, I hate disappointing people, so that's the easiest way to keep me going, but I really do love playing this game and I'm just finding myself without very much time to do it anymore at all. And I do have to balance this against the other things that I enjoy in life. And if I could just stop playing every other game in the world that I, I find fun and just play Rift, maybe I'd have the time to play it as much as I want. But the realities of growing up weigh quite a bit on my shoulders. Kids, jobs, all that sort of stuff, it changes. Enjoy the time while you've got it, guys. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.